Did you continue having missions at the, at the research stations after 2009? Well, in the desert we have. We had stations there, uh, this uh, cruise there this year. We had uh, the last crew this year uh, ended just a few weeks ago in April. It was a crew from New Zealand. We've had crews from Romania and Hungary. We've had uh, many uh, broad international crews of multinationalities. We've had all American crews, all German crews. We've had all male crews, all female crews. We've had mixed crews of every type. Uh, we've had student crews. We've had crews that the uh, average age was over uh, 50. Uh, you know, we've done all kinds of things there. Um, we've learned a lot. Um, but right now, we're in a fight because the Obama administration um, put an end to the Bush's vision for space exploration, uh, which had already frankly decayed from a moon, Mars, and beyond program into a moon-only program, which is what made it vulnerable to cancellation. It had no inspiring goal. And now NASA's human spaceflight program has no goal at all. And now they've canceled uh, the robotic Mars exploration missions that were planned for 2016 and 2018. And so here you go. You've set the, the human spaceflight program has no goals. The, human, the robotic exploration program is on hold. Uh, and a fiscal tsunami is on the way. Uh, NASA, the whole space agency, is at risk at this point because if you have a, an agency without uh, goals, people are going to ask, why are we funding it? So, uh, you know, in the current issue of Space News, I have an article, that a space program we can believe in, that outlines what kind of program we have to have if we're really going to get to Mars or if we're going to have a, a defensible space program at all. And um, this is the fight that we're in now to restore the robotic missions, uh, which is NASA's most successful program, actually, and to give the human spaceflight program a mission. So what, um, uh, what are those goals? What, what are the, the overreaching goals for the robotic program as well as the human program? Well, the overreaching goal for the human program should be human exploration of Mars, okay, as the opening uh, sh uh, of the program that will ultimately lead to human settlement of Mars, but for our generation, exploration, okay. The robotic program should support that. In 1994, Dan Golden, following the failure of the Mars Observer, instituted a Mars exploration program involving sending small probes to Mars every two years. As a result of the funding increase we and others were able to win, those probes became larger. But we still were sending one or two probes to Mars every two years. We sent Pathfinder and Mars Global Surveyor in 1996. We sent the two failed probes in 98, but we pushed right through that to land, send the Mars Global uh, uh, Odyssey in 2001. Uh, Spirit and Opportunity in 2003, uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter in 2005, Phoenix in 2007, that was the Mars Scout mission. Uh, okay, we skipped 2009 because we had a much more expensive mission, which is Curiosity, but that's now on the way to Mars. Uh, and then there's Maven in 2013, a uh, small orbiter. But now that's been discontinued. But that's, we, you know, Obama says he'd like to send humans to Mars someday. Well, if so, the least he could do is continue the program that was in place to avail ourselves of every opportunity, which come every two years, of sending robotic probes to Mars. You know, people say, oh, we need to learn more about Mars before we send humans. Well, okay, by all means, then let's learn. Let's send the probes. Okay? Uh, okay. Then the human program should have a goal, and that should be humans to Mars. And it needs to be focused. It needs to have a schedule. It should not be, oh, we're going someday. And that's why we're doing this, and that's why we're doing that. Okay. In other words, you, you don't want to use uh, humans to Mars uh, as just sizzle in order to sell a program which really doesn't accomplish very much. Right. To send people up and down to the space station forever? There's been over 300 missions to low Earth orbit between the US and the Soviets. Uh, since the dawn of the space age. 
So we keep on doing them. Is this a, a human program? Using astronauts as guinea pigs to evaluate the effects of zero gravity on human physiology? Is that why we go to space? To, that's like going to sea in order to study seasickness. Okay, uh, it's ridiculous. You, the reason why you go to sea is to sail across the sea to reach the lands on the other side of the sea. The reason why you go to space should be to go across space to reach the new lands on the other side of space. Okay, the, uh, so it needs to be directed. Now, they can either take Apollo-like approach or, no, look at what just happened, SpaceX. They just developed the Falcon 9 and the Dragon and flew them successfully Total budget between the two programs, $600 million, which is about one-tenth of what these bureaucrats would estimate that such a thing would cost, given their cost-plus methods of, of doing things. Why doesn't NASA just put out an RFP right now and say, we want a Humans to Mars program? Here it is. Bid on it. you got to get Humans to Mars within 10 years. Bids of over $20 billion will be considered non-responsive. Proposals will be evaluated on the basis of cost, scientific exploration capability, and technical credibility of the proposal, just like any other procurement. Okay? SpaceX would bid. I bet you their bid would be less than $10 billion. Lockheed Martin would bid, too. Okay, $10 billion is a lot of money in the real world. Okay? Um, you know, Boeing would bid. Okay? Then they could do that contract that we could be on Mars in 10 years. Instead, if you say, oh, oh my God, radiation, oh, zero gravity, oh, we can't do this, oh, we have to wait till we have warp drive before we go to Mars, but don't worry, we're working on it. We have this interesting little experiment in this lab over here. Uh, we're, we're, we're on the way, man. Uh, we've got a, a group planning a mission for the year 2047. Um, the, you know, just get rid of that. Decide to go, go. This is what NASA should be doing. What do you think it would take in order to change the way that NASA operates? I would love personally to see them go back to an Apollo method of procurement, or just like you, you suggested, having an RFP right now. What will it take to get rid of the bureaucracy? It takes a presidential decision to do it. Look, Apollo didn't happen because the bureaucracy in NASA wanted to do it. It happened because John F. Kennedy said, we'll do it. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. When we went to the moon, we committed to go to the moon. First of all, we didn't know how to go to the moon. Okay. We just said, look, we're going to go to the moon, and we know we can do it because as American, we can do anything. Okay. And yeah, there's going to be risk, okay. but the mission comes first, and we're willing to embrace risk. Okay. Now, you, there you had a president who had been a PT boat commander, okay? So he was of the same species as those astronauts, okay? Same kind of person. Uh, and a person who understood that things are worth risking for. And the Apollo was done by the generation who had done World War II or by their younger brothers. And the, you know who had stormed beaches in Normandy and Tarawa and liberated continents, okay, and taking losses doing it, but they knew it was worth it. And uh, in Apollo, the mission was worth it. It wasn't, oh, we'll go to the moon someday when it's safe. It's not, we're going to go to the moon now because this is important, okay. Human liberty is at stake, okay. Uh, and so we're going to do this. We're going to put ourselves on the line to do this, okay. The mission came first. And if you understand that, if you're mission-driven, then you're willing to do this. You know, in this article I just wrote in Space News, I said, mission success must be the top criteria. Now, that seems like apple pie. But wait a second. Mission success means actually flying the mission. Okay. Um, if mission success is your top criteria, it means safety is not your top criteria. If safety is your top criteria, you don't fly, ever. Okay? Okay. So that's what we have to do. We have to have a space program that says the mission comes first. Now, safety is important to a degree, but think about it this way. Let, let's, let's imagine you're the planner of a robotic campaign to explore Mars. Okay. And let's say you have two options for your mission design. 
you could do a lot, a lot of testing and just fly one mission, one rover to Mars, and you've got a 95% success probability. Or you could do somewhat less testing, but you save some money there, and you're able to fly two mission rovers, each with a 90% probability. Which is the better plan? Well, if you know your probability, the better plan's the second one. Because two rovers, each with a 90% success probability, means you have a 99% probability that at least one will succeed, and you even have an 81% probability that both will succeed, which is not even possible with the other plan. Okay, So it's a much better thing to do. Uh, I say if you have a similar situation with manned flight, the answer is the same. You go for the plan that gives your best opportunity of mission success. Now, of course, if the choice is between one mission with 95 and two with a 10% probability, the 95% mission is a better plan because two with 10% is still a lower success of missions, chance of mission success than one with 95. So you have to improve the probability of mission success to the point where there is a reasonable chance of success. But you can't keep spending and spending and spending and deferring the mission and never flying in order to try to get 100% probability because you'll never get it. <laughs>